Hello everyone and welcome back to Half-Life 2. This is episode 10. Last time we did the Follow Freeman level where it was a Strider hellscape but we did eventually make it through a lot of deaths both for myself and my squad but all in the name of freedom as we are now in the tunnels underneath uh, the city thanks to Dog who's lifted us under here and we're gonna go uh, do the level titled Our Benefactors so are we gonna meet them? <laughs> are we gonna are we gonna meet them or are we just gonna learn about them? Holy shit. Okay, well from what we can see immediately, that this citadel is dug quite deep into the earth, and it's like from what we've seen in previous uh, previous parts with like all the machinery and stuff, it's like smashing into the earth. It looks like that's what's happening down here as well. I don't know what is going on with this thing, but let's uh, let's find out, I suppose. So I think we're jumping. I think we're jumping down here. Supposed to be going up, not down. <laughs> oh god! Oh shit! <laughs> oh man, this is so immersive. I love the all of the the little efforts and. Uh, whoa! Oh, see you later, bud. <laughs> I love all of like the effort it goes to to be like here's like rocks falling and stuff and to like really sell the the environment and everything moving here. Uh, okay, I'm going to be under the opinion that we have to do this okay was that it do we do it right god damn why are they slamming into the ground though oh hang on maybe this isn't where we're supposed to go oh up here there we go I love the parts of Half-Life 2 that are more like up to your own so, sort of speed and exploration and taking in the world around you because we have a you have a lot of levels where it's like ah and it's just like chaotic like shooting everything and running around getting killed and all of that kind of stuff like the whole level it's insane and then I really like the effort the levels where it takes a little bit of a breath just at, at least you know for a moment where you can walk through and really soak in uh, the atmosphere uh, and the environment of this world and like the technology of whatever the hell this thing is you know what I mean um, so so good there's just been a huge variety of levels that we've been given in this game like um, stuff that's like very much like you know us being like play around with the, the physics and get in this boat and get in this car and fuck things up <laughs> Uh, go into your little uh, horror zombie level, you know, and now we're going into uh, the citadel itself, where people are being shipped off in pods. So Dr. Mossman, Eli, and Alex should be in here apparently. That was a bit of a fall. That was a bit of a bit of a fall, wasn't it? <laughs> Just a little bit, guys. It's 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 uh it goes pretty deep down into the ground. All right, so don't do that. What if you do, okay? Just do this instead, guys. Just be just be smart about it, okay? Don't be like me. Don't be like me. Are we being shot at? What was that? What is that noise? Nope. That's the noise. Oh. 
Ooh, does it want me to go in? <laughs> Are we going in? Does it want me to go on a ride? Yes. <laughs> I'm picking the one that is not going to get zapped. <laughs> I think that's probably the smart choice. Oh my god, I'm willingly getting in one of these things. Ah, the Half-Life Roller Coaster Ride. Oh my god. Ah, ah. So immersive. Ah. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh. I wonder how visible I am in these things. Look, what are these giant tubes? Um, where am I going? <laughs> Why have I done this? Gordon, is this really the only way? Seal myself into this fucking pod? Willingly, too. What the fuck? Oh shit. How is Gordon not utterly traumatized, dude? He just internalizes a lot of this shit in his life. Oh my god. Oh, we're gonna just literally just go right above him. everywhere except up. These guys. Dude, this is just like the Half-Life 1 tram ride at the beginning except fucking insane. <laughs> Except dark and like utterly existential as we're, our alien overlords have turned humanity into something disgusting. And for what purpose? Oh shit! Was lowered down. Security alert. Unregistered weapons detected. Confiscation field engaged. Confiscate. Whoa! My crowbar! No! Not the gravity gun, dude! No, not the gravity gun! No! Whoa, why is it now blue? Ooh. Zero point energy gun. Oh! Okay, so it's still the same, but it's just been powered up with the blue. It's resistant to getting disintegrated by the confiscation field. Oh my god, seeing all of my weapons. They were just like, alright guys, we know what your favorite weapon in the game is going to be, so we'll let you keep it. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Okay, so it still does gravity. Oh, we can do gravity on bodies now! We weren't able to do that before! That's what I've been trying to do this whole game, is doing gravities on dead bodies, dude. We can... <laughs> oh, yes! We can gravity dead bodies! That's what I've been trying to do, man. 
for so long. Holy shit, it's so powerful now. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> oh, Gordon. You really got a fucking knack for getting yourself into some trouble, don't you? So, this is Dr. Freeman. At last. I wish I could say this was a pleasant surprise, but it's neither a surprise nor, as you will surely agree, very pleasant. Well, I am nothing if not pragmatic. I was expecting more of a speech from him there. So, Dr. Breen, the previous administrator... The previous administrator at Black Mesa, who we don't actually... We don't actually know. Oh, you can just you can just whip them out while they're still alive. I just got this dude while he was still alive. See ya. Whee! <laughs> um, I was expecting a bit more speech there, but Doctor Doctor Breen. Whoa! My suit power goes up to two hundred now. What the fuck? My suit's been supercharged. So the HEV suit... <laughs> the HEV suit... Um, must have also gotten the power up from the confiscation field. I have just like so many questions... Like where we're at at this point in the game... Like, like questions alluding to what the hell's going on. Obviously their rhetorical questions don't answer them. This is a theory moment with Mapo where I am just trying to piece together things where it's like Dr. Breen was the administrator of Black Mesa facility. Um, in the time that has passed, which is what I assume to be decades from what we've read of like the like newspaper clicking uh, clippings and um, Alex being grown up and like time that has passed, like G-Man popped us in much, much later. It's been a long time. So many things have changed. There's the, the Combine, which are like a, a whole entirely different enemy alien force, but also they, the head crabs still exist, but only the head crabs and the ones that possess ones and become zombies. There's none of those um, hound eyes, I think there's called. There's none of the squid things. There's none of the original creatures except Vorts, which are now on our side, and head crabs. Um, so it's like this whole entire new thing that humanity is not necessarily willingly under the control of. It's like just been this thing where Dr. Breen somehow has been like, I'm going to be the liaison and I'm the administrator of just one city, City 17. I'm assuming there's multiple cities considering they're numbered um, potentially all over the world or at least in, I don't know how widespread this is. I assume obviously it's going to be over the whole entire world. The world is enslaved almost. Being turned into transhumans. But then, how does G-Man... How does he come into this? Because he's talking about in Half-Life 1, he was talking about his employers. And then... Uh, Dr. Breen talks about our benefactors. So I don't... I think those that might even be different. I don't know if G-Man's been employed by the same people. I don't know what his thing is, but he was... There was one specific sh shot that we saw him where he was speaking to some of our people. We zoomed in all the way in the distance. He was talking to one of our guys. Uh, so I don't know if he's on our side here. But he's not doing anything. And that's another thing that's really, really strange about his character of, of G-Man. Um, is he... He wakes us up and then he just appears in the background as a mysterious figure. And that's it. So I'm really curious to see what his role is and what he's actually doing in the background. Because he's just a mysterious... Oh, there he is in the background character right now. Um, so I... I actually was expecting to get a lot more of him in Half-Life 2 because I was like, it seems like we'd be working closely with him after we got given a new assignment um, at the end of Half-Life 1. So it actually is quite surprising that instead it's some it's someone else in a different place with a whole different setting. Um, and I just like, I'm waiting for some big like mind-blowing stuff to happen. But I need to know what the hell G-Man is doing in the, in the background because he's like... He's so interesting and weird, and I know nothing about him. You know what I mean? 
And then Gordon Freeman... Gordon Freeman... Our, our mute little guy, who's got nothing to say... <laughs> Gordon Freeman who's just got nothing to say, just a silent killer. Who barely even got a PhD. <laughs> and he's just, he's just zooming through this place. <laughs> the fact that the gravity gun can now pull the... <laughs> the fact that the gravity gun can now just pull their live bodies is insane. It's crazy. You just they're just alive and you just pull them. Just well, eat them. Freeman, under other circumstances, I'd like to think we might have been able to work together in an atmosphere of mutual trust and respect. Certainly judging from your brief tenure at Black Mesa while I was its administrator, you showed every promise of becoming a valuable and productive contributor to the scientific process. And yet, I'm not sure what spurred you to it. But there is really no place in this enterprise for a rogue physicist. Okay. So obviously we don't we don't know who Dr. Breen was in Half-Life 1. He's just a guy. He's just the administrator. Was he in on what was going on? Was he aware of the, the whole Zen invasion and taking over Border World and all of that kind of stuff? He doesn't know what spurred this on. Does he know that we are working with G-Man and G-Man just popped us in here to cause chaos? I don't... I don't know. A G-Man and the administrator together. I also don't know. Are they separate entities? Is G-Man just off doing other things while Dr. Breen does what he does to Earth with the Combine? I... it's... Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Oh! Ooh! Oh! I thought that was glass! Ooh! Well, don't touch the beam! I thought that was glass uh, at the beginning. Gotta watch out for that. I'll get you. Zappy beam. Oh god. It's a Halo 1 teleporter! <laughs> Boom! It looks like this. Okay, so we got. Oh, nice. I have a ball of gravity. Oh god, it blows up. It blows up in your face. Oh shit, it restores our- these restore our health as well. Why does it restore health now? Have I been- Have I just been changed by this event, or what? Have I been have I been changed so I am now electrified because I can heal myself on power stations? Like what the fuck is Have I changed biologically by being in this place? Has something happened to me? Or am I just getting off am I just getting off track? No more messages from Dr. Breen? No more voice memos? are partly to blame, of course. My disappointment in Eli Vance and Isaac Kleiner is far greater than my sorrow over your unfortunate choice of career path. In a way, I suppose you could not have done otherwise. Who knows what seeds of iconoclasm they planted when you were young and gullible. But while they certainly share a great part of the responsibility for the recent troubles, it is you alone who have chosen to act with such willful disregard for humanity's future. Although he keeps just popping in to give fragments of a speech. Um, and he thinks he's like in your youth, like in the Black Mesa incident. So he's like, you know, he's talking about it like it was fucking ages ago. But at the same time, I don't think any time has passed for Gordon because he's just been 
pop in. Because G-Man just sends you to fucking... <laughs> G-Man just pops you in, you know? You're in, you're in like, some form of purgatory. Like, Adri just, just guys, remember from Opposing Force, Adrian Shepard is still sat in a helicopter just guiding through another dimension somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. Where's, um... Where's that Doctor... Where's Doctor Rosenberg? Is he gonna pop up? Because Barney did his whole thing and he escaped with a couple of scientists and Dr. Rosenberg. Wait a minute. Isn't Isaac... Because Isaac is that other... Wait a minute. Hold on a second. While we're, while we're here, I'm just... I need to quickly check out my... I want to... Because Dr. Rosenberg has two scientists with him that get out of Black Mesa. I'm pretty sure that's Eli and Isaac. I'm pretty sure those two scientists is Eli and Isaac. I think. I'm, I'm going to go check my, my Blue Shift episode and, and see. Alright, so it's I just went back and checked. It's not... It's not Eli and Isaac. Because I know that Eli mentions that he was someone who helped, like, at a different point in um, in the Black Mesa incident. But I was like, I wonder if they were also around hanging out with Dr. Rosenberg. But no, that was Walter and Simmons. So there is, there's Walter Simmons and Dr. Rosenberg, those three scientists from Blue Shift that are unaccounted for. But Barney escaped with them. I guess they'll probably not show up then but i was like i was wondering if there's got there would be like some form of more survivors from black mesa like i wonder what they're up to they're probably like just hiding out undercover to be honest um but god like when he just talks about like black mesa being so long ago it's just to gordon it was like yesterday it feels like i mean i don't i don't feel like i want to like <laughs> i don't know like you can see on the on the Gordon looks the same on the cover art, so he doesn't look like he's changed at all, you know. But everyone else has grown so old. Eli's like, God damn it, Gordon, why do you have to look so good still? Oh god. Get disintegrated! Oh god. There you go, I got him. God damn! What am I wait? I want I've pressed a button. I'm waiting for something to happen, right? Is it just a really long lift? Oh shit! Am I waiting for something in this thing? What am I waiting for? Oh, there it is. It's a really long lift. There it is. I'm taking over this citadel on my own. <laughs> We've rallied everyone to our to our cause, but I'm doing this on my own, baby. Alright, up we go. Nice. It's got a shield. Perfect. Oh no! They can still shoot me. This, is it, it's just a shield that I can't walk out of. 
God, are we just going we go right to the top? I'm assuming Dr. Breen, like when we, at the beginning of the game, they had the teleporter problem, we got teleported right into his office, and that's how he knew that Gordon Freeman was even here, is I'm assuming that, like, oh my God. <laughs> Um, yeah. uh, with Gordon Freeman in his office, I'm assuming that that, that was here. I'm assuming that's the Citadel. Oh, you can pull them into those beams and they get disintegrated. World. Get out of here. God, it's still going. We're almost there, I guess. Ugh. Oh. Aha! Uh -huh. Tell me, Dr. Freeman, if you can. You have destroyed so much. What is it exactly that you have created? Can you name even one thing? I thought not. I created you as a result of my actions, apparently. God, they're throwing everyone at me. And they can't even touch me, because I'm Gordon Freeman, baby! I'm storming this fucking place. The Citadel is my house now. I have laid the foundation for humanity's survival. And not as we have narrowly defined ourselves, but as something greater than we could ever imagine. Something we can now only begin to glimpse. So there was like, so there was a seven year war or a seven hour war. What was it called? Seven something war and humanity surrendered. And then this is the result. And then in order for, to negotiate humanity survival, Dr. Breen was like, you know what? I'm going to just subject us all to just absolute transformation and torture. Oh, I can throw these things. I can throw these things. Uh huh. Oh shit! Is it worth it? Uh, well, I mean, what other choice do I have, bro? You would kill me, regardless. You would kill me otherwise. So I'm fighting for my freedom. Fighting for my right to party, dude. Oh, okay, hang on. We're going for another ride. We're going for another ride. All right, let's go. Let's go for another ride. I mean, this time they know that I'm here, though. So they, does he know that I'm on a little on a little pod roller coaster? Let's go on another ride. Oh shit! The face with the with the things. Uh, I'm about to get scanned. Um... Hi! I've been scanned. Oh, shit. Oh, 
Half-Life is one of the most immersive video game series I've ever played in my life. And that, like, does, it doesn't even matter what the graphics looked like in the first game. Like, it's they managed to tell a story so fucking well and really just immerse you in, like, the environment to the point where you were just so sucked in. What the fuck are those? What the fuck are those? That's new. view from the city. This is one of the greatest games ever, ever made. This is one of the greatest games ever made, dude. And it's not even over yet. The Half-Life 3 memes make so much sense now. How could you not want and desire so much more of this game? And this world, holy shit. Like, how could you not want more of this? This is one of the best video game experiences I've ever had. I hope you guys are really enjoying the playthrough, because I am. Like, <laughs> this is just insane. Dark energy. Oh, hi! No! That's mine! That's mine, you punk. Oh, Dr. Mossman. Don't struggle. It's no use. Until you're where he wants you, there's nothing you can do. I'm sorry, Gordon. I thought you were my biggest fan. We, I thought we had something. Carbon stars with ancient satellites. By vast meteorological intelligences. Worlds stretched thin across the membranes where the dimensions intersect. intersect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Impossible to describe with our limited vocabulary. What I've seen is also beyond words, Breen. Genocide. Indescribable evil. Good God. Well, if it isn't Gordon Freeman at last. What's this? I'll put it over there. Phew. Have my gratitude, Doctor. First you lead me straight to the doorstep of my oldest friend, and then you deliver yourself? If I'd known you were going to come straight up to my office, I wouldn't have bothered hunting you in the first place. Having both of you in my keeping ensures I can dictate the terms of any bargain I care to make with a combine. <laughs> Dr. Breen. Huh. Wallace. Yes, Judith, what is it? The bargain we should be making is for Eli's life so he can continue his research. Thanks to you, we have everything we need in that regard. You're more than qualified to finish his research yourself. What neither you nor I can do is convince that rabble in the streets to give up their senseless struggle. Yet Eli refuses to speak the words that would save them all. Save them? For what? Eli. If you won't do the right thing for the good of all people, maybe you'll do it for one of them. <sighs> Honey. Dad. Gordon? No. God damn you, Bring you let her go. That's all up to you, my old friend. Will you let your stubborn short-sightedness doom the entire species, or will you give your child the chance her mother never had? <laughs> How dare you even mention her? Alex, my dear, you have your mother's eyes, but your father's stubborn nature. You haven't seen a bit of it yet. Really? Well, let's see how well it serves you on the far side of a combined portal. Go ahead, Bree. <laughs> if that's the worst you can do, send us both to your... That necklace is very interesting. Oh, it's hardly the worst. But you might find that hard to believe once you get there. It isn't necessary. I agree. It's a total waste. Fortunately... The Resistance has shown it is willing to accept a new leader. And this one has proven to be a fine pawn for those who control him. No! Don't I mean, it's true. I am just doing as I'm told, apparently. <laughs> Did you realize your contract was open to the highest bidder? Gordon would never make any kind of deal with you. I understand if you don't wish to discuss this in front of your friends. I'll send them on their way, and then we can talk openly. 
Don't struggle, honey. Dad, I'm so sorry. Alex, Suda. Judith, what do you think you're doing? We're doing what I could never do alone. We're stopping you. Yes. Guards, get in here. <laughs> Guards, get in here. Oh shit. They know you betrayed them. They'll turn on you. Judith, let me free. Horseman, please. I'm sorry, Wallace. You're all out of time. Don't. Hurry. No, D Judith, you're about to get zapped. Judith, you're about to get zapped. Watch out, he's gonna. No. Oh. Oh, fuck. No, he's got my gun. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about me, honey. There's fuck. no time, Alex. He's on his way to the portal. You'll need this. Dr. Mossman. Wow. Judith. She redeemed herself. After my father. Kind of. Don't you worry. Dad, I'm not saying goodbye. Never. Come on. Yeah. I got you a I got you a chair. Far out. Look at that view from the citadel, dude. Leaving you again, Eli. Come on. No, Dr. Breen has my fucking I can only pick I can pick up hang on. Just disrespecting my surroundings. We haven't known each other very long, but I know you didn't have to do this. I had to rescue my father, but you... Well... Thanks for coming after me. Oh, she's wearing a black mesa Listen. jumper. That's him! A host body. There he is! Right behind me. Whoa. Shit. Whoa. Damn it, not again. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? The gravity gun. <laughs> he doesn't have a clue, does he? I wonder where he's going. Dude, a host body. This is the Citadel's dark fusion reactor. It powers their tunneling entanglement device. We'll never have a chance like this again. We've got to stop Dr. Breen. Wow. I can't shut it down. Looks like he's turned over control to the other side. You'll have to go into the core and do what you can. Get in the elevator and I'll let you in. Don't forget to charge your seat. It's charged, baby. Holy Do shit. Worst, Gordon. But be careful. Alex, lay me down a cool beat. To save humanity, too. Doctor Freeman, there he is. Where? Doctor Freeman, you really shouldn't be out there. At the moment of synapse, as I teleport, this chamber will be bathed in deadly particles that have yet to be named by human science. Perhaps when I have the leg oh. to do the work myself, I'll name one of them after you. That way, you won't be completely forgotten. When the singularity collapses, I will be far away from here. In another universe, as a matter of fact. In another universe? The other hand will be destroyed in every way it is possible to be destroyed. And even in some which are essentially impossible. Ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey, guess what, mate? Hey, uh, hey, uh, guess what? Oh, he really doesn't know the power of the gravity gun. He really doesn't know. I'm about to disconnect the power from this shit. I don't 
think I can. How do I get the other ones? I need to just quickly walk around the edge. Walk around the edge. Quick. I don't know what you can possibly hope to achieve apart from your own annihilation. Don't you listen to anyone. Okay, maybe that didn't do what I needed. Oh, I thought it would have turned off like the teleporter, and he would have been like, "No, don't turn off the teleporter." Alright, what did I deactivate by unplugging the things? Oh shit, it's like a platforming segment. Okay. I see. Platforming segment. Oh, shit. Oh no, Breen started his ascent. Hurry, Gordon, before he escapes. Uh, where am I going? Oh, I'm going up. Thing. I could have told you that was pointless, Dr. Freeman. Go, Gordon. Oh, now we go up to some. Still with us, Dr. Freeman. Not for much longer, I think. If only you had harnessed your boundless energy for a useful purpose. Oh, shit. That was close. Oh my god. The portal's Oh, Alex is right there. Oh my god. Uh fuck. What am I ah. I hope you said your farewells. Ah. Ugh. Ah. doing here? What are we doing? Just shoot this at it. Oh, there we go. Go back, Freeman. You have no idea what you're doing. Yes, destroy it. I've, I've never had any idea what I'm doing ever since my first day at Black Mesa. That's your problem, Breen. You're messing with a man who has no idea what he's doing at all times. I don't know what I did exactly, but oh. we've got to get out of here. Maybe we still have uh time, Dr. Freeman. Whoa! Is it really that time again? It seems as if you only just arrived. You've done a great deal in a small time span. You've done so well, in fact, that I've received some interesting offers for your services. Ordinarily, I wouldn't contemplate them, but these are extraordinary times. Hmm? <laughs> Rather than offer you the illusion of free choice, I will take the liberty of choosing for you. If and when your time 
comes round again. I do apologize for what must seem to you an arbitrary imposition, Dr. Freeman. I trust it will all make sense to you in the course of... Well, I'm really not at liberty to say. In the meantime, this is where I get off. What the fuck? That's a cliffhanger. That's a cliffhanger and a half. I'm so glad that I know that there's Half-Life 2 Episode 1 and Episode 2. Because if this was how it ended, and then there was no Half-Life 3, I would throw myself out a window. <laughs> Holy shit! It just ends like that! You just shut down the thing and he's like, you need me! And then everything blows up and goes to shit. G-Man has the ability to just pop in whenever he wants as well. Like, he just appears and he's like, I will give you the illusion of choice. Eh. <laughs> he just put us back. He just put us back. He's terrifying. What is this guy? He just He's just popped us in like stasis in another dimension again and just gone, I will call upon your services. <laughs> If need be. He's so creepy! See, I was wondering, like, what the hell was going on with him. I'm like, are we gonna get any more? Are we gonna get any more of him? And he just pops up, and there he is. He does the voice of Barney as well as G-Man. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Mike Shapiro voices Barney and G-Man. They're on, like, the complete opposite sides of the spectrum of characters, especially with their voice. Oh my god. Half-Life 2 just ends so abruptly. That's crazy. That's an insane cliffhanger. What the hell, man? G-Man is so creepy, I don't get it. I was ex I was wondering if we were going to get, like, more of a uh, reveal. We just got more- I just got more questions. I didn't get answers, I got more questions! Who are the Combine? <laughs> Who are they really? What do they want? Breen was about to go to another universe. And we stopped it. And G-Man just goes, I could have stopped this at any time. G-Man has apparently the power of time. He's just like, time? Dr. Freeman? Half-Life is one of the most confusing... Lamar? Lamar? Blast that little... Where did she get to? <laughs> Half-Life is one of the most chaotic, confusing and perfect games of all time <laughs> like what did i just what did i play what did i what did i play dude what did i even play look at all these ones that i almost could have gotten find the hev suit charger faceplate in eli's scrapyard oh there's there's cool stuff in here to get apparently wow um, so that was Half-Life 2. We've just, we've just been taken to the menu. It's over until our services have been called upon again, which I guess is Half-Life 2 Episode 1. That's the next thing. And then Episode 2. And then that's it. I'm in purgatory with you guys. With a little bit of Half-Life Alex sprinkled in between. The VR game. If... Honestly, if this is how Half-Life 2 had ended and there was no episode 1 and 2, because I don't even know what's in those, I'm assuming it would continue the story in some capacity, but, um, you know, if this is how it ended and it was just like G-Man popping you in stasis, it's just like, oh my god. <laughs> you, have to, you have to wait the, the real amount of time 
for uh, like like Gordon did in stasis, just waiting there to be woken up um, by G Man, and then he goes, "Here's here's Half Life Three, where everyone who played this game as a kid is a Gordon's age." <laughs> My god. Thank you so much for watching this episode. This was the ending. That was it. That was the ending of Half-Life 2. Uh, the story continues, however. Next time, uh, we will do episode 1. Half-Life 2, episode 1. We'll uh, see what happens next. I, I have no idea. Like, I have no idea. It's still Half-Life 2, so I assume it's going to be still tied to this story, but like, it could be... We could wake up 10 years in the future. <laughs> Again. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you just be like, oh, it's been some time. And Alex is... Alex is now as old as Eli, and you have to stop the the next alien threat. I don't... I have no idea. I have no idea. I'll find out next time. Thank you so much for joining me for the base, the main game of Half-Life 2. This experience has been nothing short of spectacular. I know there's been many frustrating moments for both you and me uh, throughout this journey of learning the the chaos of this uh this playground the physics and like the this the gameplay systems and how everything works has been so cool to just like learn and get absolutely enamored in um the half-life 2 journey will continue in episode one so stay tuned for that because i'm gonna need to consume that immediately i need to know what is going on because this is this is crazy that's such like a that's such a stinger of a cliffhanger. You just get there, time freezes, and G-Man goes, "Oh, sorry, you're out. See you next time. Sit this one out, Gordon." Like, is Alex gonna be okay? She was literally at the the apex of that explosion. <laughs> like, far out. We'll just have to wait and see what happens in Half Life Two Episode One. So, thank you so much for watching this playthrough and the ending episode of the the main Half Life Two episode. And I'll see you next time.